Hi this is Gary with MacMost.com. Today let's take a look at your Mac's trackpad settings. MacMost is brought to you thanks to a great group of more than a thousand supporters. Go to MacMost.com slash Patreon. There you could read more about the Patreon campaign. Join us and get exclusive content and course discounts. So most Mac users use a trackpad. Not just any trackpad but Apple's excellent trackpads. If you're on a MacBook of course it's built in. That's why most Mac users use a trackpad. But even on a desktop Mac you have the choice between a mouse or a trackpad and you can have the same functionality with Apple's Magic Trackpads. In addition there are tons of ways to customize how the trackpad works. Go to System Settings and then scroll down to find Trackpad. And here you'll find all the trackpad settings divided into three categories. At the top you'll see a demonstration of whatever setting it is that you're currently looking at. So for instance right now it's just showing you a simple click on the trackpad. Now one thing is to note is you may see slightly different settings here depending upon which metal MacBook you have or which Magic Trackpad you have. So I'm using the most recent Magic Trackpad from Apple. But on my M2 MacBook Air I for instance don't see silent clicking there. So some of these are going to be different for you. Now the first setting here is tracking speed. So as you move your finger across the trackpad this is how fast the pointer moves. So if I set it all the way over here to fast the same movement moves it pretty quickly across the screen. If I go to slow I have to move quite a bit to get across. So if you find you're doing this a lot then try increasing the speed to get it to what you want. It accelerates so moving slowly will move with precision and moving quickly will jump a larger distance. If you're switching from an older trackpad or a Windows trackpad this may take some getting used to. But it's fantastic for quickly getting to wherever you want on the screen without having to continuously swipe like that. And also for choosing the exact spot you want to click with precision. Now for clicking you can set how hard you need to click on the trackpad surface for it to be considered an actual click. So you can do light and then you barely have to touch the trackpad for it to be a click. Or you can do firm if you find you're always accidentally clicking. Then you really have to be more intentional when you click. Now silent clicking I have as an option on my trackpad and with it off you can hear an audible sound whenever I click. But turn it on and I still hear a little bit of sound but definitely not that snap that you hear with this turned off. Now there are actually two levels of click. One is a simple click to click down somewhere and the other is click and then continue to click past that. And that's called a force click. And this can be used for various things. For instance if I click here it will move the cursor there. But if I click and then click past that it will actually bring up the dictionary for that word. Likewise if I were to click on a file here I just select that file. If I go to the icon for it though and I click and then click past that it will actually bring up Quick Look. Now you can change this to instead of force click with one finger to tap with three fingers instead. And note that if I turn off force click and haptic feedback then my only option here is tap with three fingers. Now this next setting here is a very important one. It's secondary click. Windows users know this as a right click. It's what brings up context menus. You can do this by holding the control key down on your keyboard and just doing a regular click. And that brings up a context menu like the one for the desktop here. But you can also do whatever is listed here. So click with two fingers actually bring up the context menu. But you can switch that to click in the bottom right corner or the bottom left corner of the trackpad. Or you can turn it off. So none of these will work but you can still hold the control key down and click to bring up the context menu. And finally the last setting here is tap to click. So if you turn that on you can actually just tap the surface of the trackpad to click. You don't have to press down although that still works as well. This allows you to almost completely silently click and it's effortless. If you've had this turned off or you just had it on but you haven't tried just tapping to click give it a try for a day or two because you may find you prefer this. Now let's go over to Scroll and Zoom. There are some settings here as well. The first one is very controversial and it's natural scrolling. And many years ago Apple switched to this so that scrolling on your trackpad on your Mac matches how you scroll say on an iPad or iPhone with a touch screen. You can see here in the demonstration at the top that if you just move your two fingers up the content moves with your fingers. But you could switch that to the opposite and then you could see how scrolling down will actually scroll the page down moving the content in the opposite direction 
from how you're moving your fingers. Whichever one you prefer you can be sure there's somebody who believes the opposite one is the only correct way to do it. Now a great thing about using a trackpad is you can pinch with two fingers in or out to zoom. You could be in an app say here like Preview with an image and if I pinch apart, spread two fingers apart like that then you could see how I zoom in and two fingers together and I zoom out. This works on web pages too. I can zoom in and zoom out. There's also the ability to double tap with two fingers to zoom in. So here in Preview I just take two fingers and I double tap and you can see it zooms in like that. Not quite as useful as using two fingers and pinching. You can also use two fingers to rotate. So here in Preview you can't rotate less than 90 degrees but you can use two fingers to do that 90 degree rotation like that. In another app like say Pixelmator Pro here you can use this to easily rotate at any angle. Under More Gestures you've got a whole bunch of different things here. You've got Swipe Between Pages. If you go and turn that on you'd have to choose one of three options. Scroll left to right with two fingers, swipe with three fingers, or swipe with two or three fingers. So whichever one you prefer. Scroll left to right with two fingers. Say you're in Safari here. I could use two fingers and go back to the previous page. I can use two fingers to go forward again. For Mission Control you can use Control left arrow and right arrow to go between screens. But you can also use Swipe left to right with three fingers or four fingers to do it. Notification Center you can bring up by simply clicking on the time there or setting a keyboard shortcut. But you could also turn this on and you could swipe from the right edge with two fingers. This is a little different than some gestures because you actually have to move your fingers kind of so they're off the side like this and then drag. And then you drag back to the edge like that. You can also access Mission Control with swiping up with three fingers or four fingers. So instead of Control Up Arrow to get to Mission Control you can just do that and you can see I've entered it there. And then I could do three fingers down to exit it. App Expose allows you to see all the windows of the current app and you could do the same thing here. So swipe down enters App Expose. I just have the one window open there for the Settings app. You can use your thumb and three fingers to bring up Launchpad like this. And then you could do the opposite to dismiss it. It works if you do four fingers as well so your entire hand. And if you're not in Launchpad you could use three fingers out to temporarily show the desktop to access icons on there. And then back in again like that. So if you have these two turned on they basically work together with one extreme being Launchpad the other extreme being Show Desktop. So if you use a trackpad with your Mac take the time to go through these. Set them up as you like. You can see it's easy to turn them on and off and change them. So don't feel afraid to maybe try something out for a while to see if you like it and then change it or switch it off if you don't. Hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video click the thumbs up button below to let me know. I publish new tutorials each weekday. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out.